Once there was a queen, and the queen in her chamber, she had a nest in an alcove at the top there. And every morning she would watch because a mother bird would come. And the mother bird would come and she would drop food into the beaks of her two chicks. And those chicks, well, they would sing and they would chirp. And this scene made the queen so happy. She looked forward to it every day. But one day the mother bird never appeared, nor the next day, nor the third day. But on the fourth day, a new mother bird appeared. A plump, proud bird. And then she came and started putting food into the open beaks of the mouths of those chicks. Well, they weren't singing, they weren't chirping. Now they were screeching. And as the queen approached and looked closer, what did she see? She saw that the mother bird, the new bird, was now putting thorns into the mouths of those babies. And she shooed away the bird and the mother bird flew out the window, but it was too late. Because a second later, those two lifeless bodies dropped down to the ground. And the queen, the queen picked up those lifeless bodies and she took them to the garden, to the royal garden, and she dug a little grave where she buried them. And for an age she stood there, still not believing what immense cruelty she had witnessed. And that thought would not leave her mind. And when her husband returned that evening, the king, and she asked him, she said, Husband, if I ever died, would you take on another wife? He said, why are you saying such things like this? Are you ill? She said, no, no, I'm fine. He says, then why are you asking questions like this? No, no, he says, I'm not going anywhere and I hope you're not going anywhere. And the next day, the same question. Husband, if I died, would you take another wife? And also, every day, the reply would be the same. Now, some time later, sadly, the queen, she did get ill. And the best physicians in the land couldn't help her. And sadly, she passed away. And sadly she passed away and there were six months of official mourning. And after six months, well, advisors were saying, Your Majesty, you should marry again. You have to marry again. You know, the kingdom, the kingdom demands a queen and your seven daughters, your seven daughters, they need a mother. But the king would have none of it. And another six months passed. But after a year, well, the, the requests became stronger. And the king begrudgingly took on another wife. And it was a strange thing because... She appeared with a daughter that was about the same age as his oldest daughter. And to the world, she showed a smiley, shiny face. But when she was alone with the girls, well, she showed her true face. And at first, well, at first she was accusing them of misdeeds and crimes that they had not committed. And then it got worse. Then she started denying them food. And what did those girls do? Well, those seven poor girls, they would make their way into the forest. And they would forage for whatever food they could find. And one afternoon, one afternoon as they were there, a strange thing happened because out of nowhere, it seems, appeared a beautiful berry tree. And these berries were ripe, ripe and fat and juicy, but just out of reach. And a strange thing happened. As they were trying to reach, suddenly the branches started lowering themselves and offering its fruit. And they ate those fruits and oh, their mouths burst with flavour. And then when they reached again once more, that branch lowered itself down and those girls well they fed and they feasted until they were full because unbeknown to them that was the exact place where their mother had been buried and every day they would go and the mother tree would feed them but of course it wasn't long before the stepmother thought what's happening here i'm not giving them any food i've threatened the servants to chop their hands off if anybody feeds them how the hell are they getting so fat so she said to her daughter come find out find out who's feeding them Find out who's feeding them. And off the girl went. And she followed them one afternoon. And as she watched from behind a tree, she saw the mother tree lowering down its branches, lowering those branches down and feeding those girls. And she ran back and told her mother what she saw. And her mother came and watched the same spectacle. And then she said to her husband, they're involved in witchcraft. They, 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 they dabble in the black arts. He said, no, no, my daughters aren't like that. She said, I've seen it with my very own eyes. You have to do something about this. You have to put a stop to this. And the king, of course, what could he do? Because every day those threats grew. Every day the accusations grew and the king knew he couldn't watch them 24 hours a day. So with a heavy heart, one day he said to his seven daughters, let's go, let's go and have a picnic. And they were thrilled. Their father never had time to spend any time with them, any meaningful time. And off they went, deeper and deeper into the forest, past the part that they were normally prohibited to pass. But of course, why would they be worried? They were with their father. And soon they ended up deep in the heart of the forest by the side of a river. And he says, I, I'm just going to go and wash my hands. And he disappeared behind a bush, but he hung his dupatta, his scarf on the bush. 
And as the girls laid out the food and they were giggling and eating, every now and again they would see the scarf fluttering in the wind and they thought their father would join them any minute. But you know, now, now the shadows were getting long. As it was getting darker, the older daughter thought, I'd check and see if he's fine. And she went behind the bush. But of course he was gone. For whatever reason, he'd abandoned them. And she went back to her sisters and she said, We're all alone. And they huddled together. Smallest one who was barely five years old. She sobbed and she cried. But what could they do? And some time later, in the dead of night, the giddles came. The jackals. And they came and they tore the first sister away from that group. And she was never seen again. And the other six, they cried. And some time later, the pack of giddles came again. They took the second sister. And the others sobbed. And so it happened till just the youngest one remained. And in panic she fled. She fled into the darkness of that forest. And just by coincidence she hit upon that tree. The mother tree. And she says, please, she said, help me. You've helped me and my sister so many times. Please help me. I can hear them. The giddles, the jackals are coming. And the mother tree. The mother tree opened up its trunk. And the girl stepped in and it closed itself around her. And those jackals came and snapped and foamed at the mouth. And tried to find the scent. And then they disappeared in search of other prey. And that's where she stayed all night. In the morning when it was safe, the mother tree opened herself up and the girl stepped out. And that became the pattern of her life from that day onwards. When it was unsafe at night, she would be protected in the arms of the mother tree. And in the daytime, she could forage for food. And that young girl grew into a young woman. And one evening, one evening as a trader had been separated from his party and he was lost in that forest well his horse was going around in circles and it came to a particular tree and it would not budge it was sniffing around the roots and he put his heel to its side and still that horse would not move he tugged at the reins and still the horse would not move so he dismounted and he looked and there from the roots all the way up to the lower branches was a crack a thin crack and he put his eyes to the crack and he looked inside and what did he see that beautiful young girl inside Darna don't be scared. I'm not going to harm you. And as soon as he said those words, well, the mother tree opened herself up and out stepped this beautiful young woman. What are you doing here? Why are you hiding? And she told him her story up to that point. And he listened. And after she finished, he says, well, you don't need to be scared anymore. And you certainly don't need to hide. If I asked you, would you be my wife? And she nodded. And he put her on the back of his horse and he took her. He took her to his house in his town. And it was a happy house. It was a happy home. And the wedding, well, the wedding was celebrated with great style and with great love and affection. And a little while later, well, that girl, her belly began to swell and her body began to change. And she gave birth to a beautiful boy who was gurgling and cooing with his fat chubby arms and legs. And the moment that boy was born, well, the longing, the pining grew within her. She desperately wanted to see her father. And one afternoon, one afternoon when she couldn't take it anymore, well, she told the dove her story. And she said, please take this message to my father. And off it flew. And that bird was singing, King, King, you have seven daughters. Six daughters were taken by the Giddles. One survives. One survives. King, come and see your grandson. Come and see your daughter. And that dove, that dove carried its message across the ruins of old fortresses, over woods and over rivers. And finally it came, it came to his kingdom and he was pruning his roses and he heard the bird cooing the message of the dove and he said to his wife, he says, there, there, listen, 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 there's a message from my daughter. And she said, well, it's not my child, is it? Why, why should I care? And she turned and stormed off. And he put out his hand and the dove came and rested on his hand. He says, please take me to my daughter. And he mounted his horse and off he went, following that bird. And they went through forests, through shallow streams, through the ruins of old fortresses until finally they came to a town. And that dove circled a particular house three times and landed on its roof and he knew it must be the place. And he knocked the door. And as he knocked the door, who opened it? But his daughter, his youngest. And she held on to her father and she hugged him a thousand times and they sat down and she told him, she told him her story up to that point. And the best father, she said, the best, come and have a look. And she took him into another room and there was the baby sleeping soundly. Meet your grandson. And that's when the tears started and they would not stop. 
And the king, the king spent three days, three magnificent days with his daughter and her new husband and his grandchild. He was shown great hospitality. And before he was about to leave, promising to return again, she said, I have something for you. A clay pot. A clay pot with a covering. She said, here is the mitta, the sweet, the sweet for my mother. He said, after everything, you are still sending her this? You are still observing the rituals and the traditions? She said, of course. It's a gift from me and my six sisters. And the king stroked his daughter's face and off he went. Well, as soon as he got back to his palace, he said, look, wife. After everything that you've done, despite everything, she has still, spent, sent, she has still sent you the mitta, the sweet, the ritual. And she grabbed her daughter and off she went, without saying a single word, without saying a single thank you, up to the tallest tower and the last room in the tower. And her and her daughter bolted the doors from the inside. And they were so excited, they were licking their lips and imagining galab jamuns, uh, sweetmeats, ladoos, oh, sticky jalebia, as they undid the covering suddenly... Suddenly the air went black. Scorpions, hornets, wasps, bees, all those things that were concealed within and agitated in that pot came and started stinging mother and daughter. Every inch of their body stung, stung, stung as that skin started to blister, as that skin started to bubble and suddenly there was a huge pop. And that room was decorated by mother and daughter's insides. And they were never heard of ever again. That room was sealed and never opened ever again. So you see, they did get their just dessert.